Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm answering a question here about integration and differential equations, which is from the Solomon G collection of the C4 papers from um, Edexcel. C4 is now P4, so this is um, you know a question that I've labeled as Solomon G P4, and this is a question that I've given to my students in one of the end of topic worksheets we have on integration of P4. This is question nine from the second integration worksheet, integration number two, and it's all about differential equations. A small town had a population of 9,000 in the year 2001. In a model, it is assumed that the population of the town at time t years after 2001 satisfies this differential equation. dp dt equals 0 0.05 times p e to the power of negative 0 0.05 times t. Show that, according to the model, the population of the town in 2011 will be 13,300 to three significant figures. So basically, we have to solve this differential equation that they gave us and um, find the value of the population after, from 2001 to 2011, that's t after 10 years. After 10 years. Okay, so this is when t is equal to zero. And this will be therefore when t equals 10. Okay, after 10 years, you'll get to 2011. Okay, so now what we must do here is first let's work on solving this differential equation. So we start off with um, dp dt is equal to 0 0.05 times p e to the power of negative 0 0.05 t. To solve differential equations, what we must do is um, we must basically get rid of this, you know, this differential, dp dt. So we're going to end up with p equals some function of t, and then we can solve it, right? So to do that, what we can do here is we can integrate both sides with respect to t. That gets rid of this dt. So dp dt integrated with respect to t, and on this side... I'm going to integrate this with respect to t as well. So I have 0 0.05 times p e to the power of negative 0 0.05 t also integrated with respect to t. Okay, now what I can do is a few things here. I can cancel these out. I'm left with here dp. And I can write out the constant on the outside. So 0 0.05 times the integral of p e to the power of ne negative 0 0.05 t with respect to t. Now what I must do is separate the variable. So anywhere I see a p, it must go on the side that says dp. Anywhere I say see something, a term in t, it must be on the side that says dt. So what I can do here is I can write the p on this side. So I'm left with 1 over p, dividing both sides by p. 1 over p, integrate with respect to p, equals 0 0.05 times the integral of e to the power of negative 0 0.05 t, integrate with respect to t. And now what I can do also is, now there's two with, two methods we can use. Um, most people would now integrate and they would integrate this as an indefinite integral and they will put plus c at the end and then they would substitute the values that they gave us, you know, some of these values, and then they would find the constant and then they would find what p is. I like to do things in a bit more of an efficient way because we don't have to take this as an indefinite integral. Why? Because we have some information that they gave us. They said in 2001, which I'm going to say this is when time equals zero, the population was equal to 9,000. And we want to find what the population is in 2011. Which that's when t equals 10, 10 years later, after 10 years. We want to find what the population is. So what I can do is, I can write here, we want to find the population, okay, um, after 10 years. And we know that the population was 9,000 when time was equal to zero. So this is now an, a definite integral. I won't have to put plus C. I can integrate it straight away with these limits. And my answer will come out as what I'm looking for, which is P when time equals 10. It's a nice, efficient way of dealing with this. So now we can integrate both sides with respect to P. Well, well, with respect to what each side says. This side with respect to P, I'm going to have 1 over P becomes, as we remember, lin of the modulus of P. Now, I'm not going to put modulus because I know P is a 
population is always going to be positive. I don't need to put the modulus sign for this. So I can put here my limits of P in 9000. If P was something that could be negative, I would put the modulus of P. But if you put it, there's no problem. You can do it either way. But I, I know that I don't need to put it, so I'm not going to put it. Now here I've got 0 0.05 times. And when I integrate, when you integrate e to the power of something, it stays exactly as it is. So it's e to the power of negative 0 0.05 T. But then I have to divide by the, dif the integral differential sorry, of what's inside the function. So I divide by the, the differential of minus 0.05t, which is negative 0.05. And then I have my limits here of 10 and 0. So now I can start substituting these in. So this is lin p minus lin 9000 equals. Now this 0.05, I can write this on the outside. So it's... Um, 0 0.05 time, divided by negative 0 0.05 times. Now I'm going to put e instead of, uh, sorry, 10 instead of uh, the t. That gives me e to the power of 0 .0, 0 0.05. Okay, if I re replace the t with 10, I get 0. Minus, negative 0 0.5 because 10 times minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.5 and minus e to the power of, put 0 in here, it's just become 0. So I've taken this on the outside. They will cancel to give me negative 1. I can combine these two together. So I have lin of p over 9000 is equal to minus 1 times e to the power of negative 0 0.5 minus 1. Okay, which is the same as saying the lin of p over 9,000, not 900, 9,000, is equal to 1 minus e to the power of negative 0 0.5. Okay, so now I can find what p is. I can basically say that this is the same as saying, let me just make a bit of space here, I don't need that right now here. This is the same as saying uh, p over 9,000 is equal to e to the power of, remember this is log to the base, e, e to the power of 1 minus e to the power of negative 0 0.5. Okay, so now my answer therefore is going to be p equals 9,000 times e to the power of, let me just neaten that up, 9,000 times all of this. So e to the power of 1 minus e to the power of negative 0 0.5. Now, yeah, that gives me, that should give me my answer. Okay, let's see what happens when we put this in the calculator. So we have 9,000 times e to the power of 1 minus e to the power of negative 0.5. Close a bracket, Ooh, close a big bracket. Okay, hopefully that will give us the answer that we require. And it does 13,339, 13,339.02 dot dot dot. So we have to show that this rounds to 13,300 to three significant figures, and that's exactly what it does. If I round it to 3SF, I'm going to get 13,300, and we have the correct answer. So P equals 13,300. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. Okay, then it says find the value which the population of the town will approach in the long term. Okay, so if I take um, what I've got here, basically, this is after I put T equals 10. So if I take my model, my model is P equals 9,000 times one uh, times e to the power of one minus e to the power of um, negative 0 0.05 times t. That's my model. Okay. So we got to see what happens when t reaches a really big number. So let's take this and see what happens. Um, first of all, I've got 9,000 times e to the power of one minus, and this is 1 over e to the power of 0 0.05t. 
Now, if t becomes really big, if t approaches a really big number, so I'll say if t approaches infinity, then 1 over, this would be like, then you'll have like 1 over e to the power of something really big, which approaches 0. Okay, because 1 over something big approaches 0, because this is e to the power of something really big. So this part approaches 0. So we can say as t approaches a big number, then p approaches 9,000 times, this is e to the power of 1. 9,000 times e, because this becomes 0, so you'll have 9,000 times e to the power of 1 minus 0. You can say that, you know, 1 minus 0 is going to give you 1. So it will become like 9,000 times e. Right, so therefore, as t is large, or as as t as 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 t um, becomes large, then p approaches nine thousand times e. What's nine thousand times e? Nine thousand times e. This e down here. Two four four six four. Two four. Four six four dot dot dot. So let's round this to three SF twenty four thousand five hundred to three SF. Okay, so P approaches twenty four thousand five hundred. Um, that's like the the model. This model, you know, shows that eventually the town will settle at that at that population. Okay, so that's how you answer such questions as this. I mean, for the for this last part of the question, what you could have done is just put t as a really high number in inside our calculation. So what we could have done here is just replaced this as 0 0.05, and then just replace t with something like say, you know, say a thousand or something like that, really large number, and you see it comes to that same value. Okay, it didn't tell you how to find it but it just told you to find it so you could have just replaced t with a really big number and we get that same answer but this is the reasoning behind it the reasoning behind it is because when you make t really big okay then this is like one over e right this is like one over e so one over e to the something if you put if you t, t make if you make t is a really big number this is one over e to the power of 0 0.05 t so you make t a really big number, this becomes 1 over e to the power of something big is 0, it's close to 0, and then that will become 1 minus 0 here, okay, and that's e to the power of 1, so it's 9,000 times e to the power of 1, which gives us that value. But if you just put t as a really big number in this original equation, it will give, a, give that same value in the end anyway. So that's fine, that, you don't really need to do this step, this is just showing you the logic behind it. So there's your answer to that question, six. I hope that was um, clear. This is a nice, easy way to do with differential equations when you have uh, something which you're finding the particular solution for. When you're given some values, it's very easy to set it up like this. You don't have to flap around with finding C and all that stuff. It's kind of automatically done for you in your calculations. So I think that's a way easier than <laughs> using plus C when you don't need to. So thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular worksheet, Integration 2, can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from the paper of Solomon G will be found in the playlist over here. And um, also there is a um, playlist for differential equations on integration um, from P4. You'll find it in the playlist in this area. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.